Why Shoot an Abortionist by Paul Hill When I first appeared on Donahue, I asked the audience to suspend judgment as to whether the action had been wise, but I took the position that Michael Griffin's killing of Dr. David Gunn was justified. I later realized, however, that using the force necessary to defend the unborn gives credibility, urgency, and direction to the pro-life movement, which it has lacked and which it needs in order to prevail. I realized that using force to stop abortion is the same means that God has used to stop similar atrocities throughout history. In the book of Esther, for instance, Ahasuerus, king of Persia, passed a law in 473, B.C., allowing the Persians to kill their Jewish neighbors. But the Jews did not passively submit. Their uses of defensive force prevented a calamity of immense proportions. In much the same way, when abortion was first legalized in our nation, if the people had resisted this atrocity with the means necessary, it would have saved millions of children from a bloody death. It is not unwise or unspiritual, thus, to use the means that God has appointed for keeping his commandments. Rather, it is presumptuous to neglect these means and expect him to work apart from them. I realized that a large number of very important things would be accomplished by my shooting another abortionist in Pensacola. Number one, this would put the pro-life rhetoric about defending born and unborn children equally into practice. Number two, it would bear witness to the full humanity of the unborn as nothing else could. Number three, it would also open the people's eyes to the enormous consequences of abortion, not only for the unborn, but also for the government that had sanctioned it and for those who are required to resist it. Number five, this would convict millions of people of their past neglect and spur many to future obedience. Number six, I also realized that this would help to force people to decide whether they would join the battle in defense of abortionists or side with their intended victims. Number seven, most importantly, I realized that this would uphold the truth of the gospel at the precise point of Satan's current attack, the abortionist's knife. While most Christians firmly profess the duty to defend born children with force, which is not being disputed by the government, most of these professors have neglected the duty to similarly defend the unborn. They are steady everywhere on the battlefield except where the battle currently rages. I was certain that if I took my stand at this point, others would join me and the Lord would eventually bring about a great victory. From an anthology on abortion released in October A.D. 2000.